Hello, my name is Dr Rita Scully and I'm a lecturer at Limerick Institute of Technology in Ireland. This video is on renewable energies. This is the second of two videos. I will introduce and explain geothermal energy and solar energy. I'll also explain semiconductors and some of the specific aspects of the periodic table that are relevant to this discussion. The first video on renewable energies discusses the energy inside the earth and it compares renewable and non-renewable energy resources. It also looks at the advantages and limits to renewable energies. Key words. In this video a number of key words will be used. Energy is the ability to move or change matter. Put another way, it is the energy to do work. Renewable energy will never run out and in most cases it's replaced as quickly as it's used. Examples would be wind, solar and hydro. Non-renewable energy are used faster than they can be replaced. Examples of these would be gas, oil and peat. The periodic table. This is a tabular display of elements arranged by atomic number. Solar power is energy and electricity in particular delivered by the sun. Geothermal power is electricity generated by the heat in the earth. What you know. In order to assist you in understanding this video, it would be useful to review two other videos. Video 1, Greenhouse Effect and video 8, the biogeochemical cycle. The periodic table. This is a tabular display of elements arranged by atomic number, electron configuration and recurring chemical properties. The structure of the table shows periodic trends. The seven rows are called the periods and they generally have metals on the left and non-metals on the right. The columns are called the groups and they contain elements with similar chemical behaviour. The organisation of the periodic table can be used to determine the relationships between the various element properties and to predict, predict chemical properties and behaviours of undiscovered or newly sensitised elements. For solar power, a number of elements from the periodic table are used. There are three elements that we will look at in relation to solar power. Silicon. This has the symbol SI and the atomic number 14. Phosphorus. This has the symbol P and the atomic number 15. And boron. This has the symbol B and the atomic number 5. In solar power, photovoltaic cells are the main unit that are manufactured to create electricity. Each photovoltaic cell is a sandwich made up of two slices of a semiconductor material, usually silicon. To generate a current, the photovoltaic cell needs to establish an electric field. An electric field occurs 
when opposite charges are separated. To get this field, manufacturers dope or cover the silicon with other materials, giving each slice of the sandwich a positive or negative electric charge. Phosphorus is used on the top layer of silicon, which adds electrons with a negative charge. Boron is used on the bottom layer, which results in fewer electrons and a positive charge. This creates an electric field at the junction between the silicon layers. Sunlight adds the energy to force the electrons to move and cause the current to be generated. Solar panels generate a direct current electricity. This is then passed through an inverter to convert to an alternating current that can be funneled into the national electri electricity grid. It can be used then in homes or businesses. Solar panels react to the visible light spectrum. This means if there is enough light to see, there is enough light for solar panels to start generating electricity. But the stronger the sunlight is, the better. Here we can see one solar cell or photovoltaic cell is created into a module. Those modules are then attached in a panel. And then that panel can be produced in many different ways. In some instances, they can be constructed on what are referred to as solar farms. Just to consider the scale of this image, here we're seeing a truck. So this is a vast area of solar panels generating electricity for a national grid. In other instances, they can be incorporated directly into a building so that it provides the electricity for both that building and if additional electricity is produced it can feed into the national grid in that country. Have you seen solar panels used in any other situations? What about a solar powered calculator? or solar powered street or traffic signs. We see solar lights attached to public lighting systems. We often see them in houses. And more and more we're seeing them incorporated into hybrid powered cars. Look around, see can you spot any other applications of solar power. Now we're going to look at geothermal power. Geothermal energy can be captured through geothermal power plants or geothermal heat pumps. A geothermal power plant is where the heat is taken from deep in the earth and it's generating steam to make electricity. Geothermal heat pumps can tap into the heat of the earth much closer to the surface to provide heat for individual buildings. Geothermal power does not require the burning of any fossil fuels. The hot water or steam that's used is returned to the ground after it has lost its heat and it can be used again so that makes it a renewable energy source. The geothermal power plant, the wells are drilled two to three kilometers into the earth to pump the steam or hot water to the surface. They're often found in areas where there are lots of hot springs, geysers or volcanic activity because these are places where the earth is hot just below the surface. The geothermal plants use steam to produce electricity. The steam comes from reservoirs found a few kilometers before below the earth. The steam rotates the turbine to generate the electricity. 
and the hot water is pumped from deep underground under high pressure. When it reaches the surface, the pressure is dropped and this causes the water to turn to steam and it is the steam that turns the turbine. This is connected to a generator that produces electricity and once the steam cools off in the cooling tower it condenses back to water. The cooled water is then pumped back into the earth so that the process can commence again. Here the red lines show the hot water and steam coming from underground and the cold water being returned back into the system. With geothermal heat pumps, they are used for many things. From heating and cooling homes or heating and cooling swimming pools. This is the same type of system but just on a much smaller scale for an individual building. Here the water is pumped just below the surface, often only a few meters deep, where the earth is at a constant 10 to 16 degrees. During the winter the water or refrigerant absorbs the warmth from the earth and the pumps bring this up to the building above. In the summer this can often be reversed so that it can be used to cool the building. Here you can see loops of the pipes going in under the ground. So we can see that it's at quite a shallow level. But even at that depth, once it's filled back in with clay, the temperature will retain between 10 and 16 degrees. So that on a hot day, if the system is reversed, cool refrigerant or water can be brought to cool the building and on cold days the refrigerant or water can be brought up to heat the building. Have you seen any examples of heat pumps? They're very common a fridge or a refrigerator is an example of a heat pump. Another example is a dryer. And a third is air conditioning units. All of these use heat pumps on a much smaller scale. But the same method is applied in each of these products that's used in relation to a heat pump for an entire building or a geothermal power plant for an entire region. What you have learned. The periodic table is a tabular display of the elements arranged by atomic number. Photovoltaic cell is a sandwich made up of two slices of semiconductor material. Phosphorus is used on the top layer of silicone, which adds extra electrons with a negative charge. Boron is used on the bottom layer, which results in fewer electrons or a positive charge. Photovoltaic cells are grouped into panels, which can be used on signs, houses or solar farms. Geothermal energy can be captured through geothermal power plants which use heat from deep inside the earth to generate steam to make electricity or geothermal heat pumps which will tap into the heat close to the earth's surface to heat water or provide heat for buildings.